Uh, John Lindsay spent many nights in the streets, not only in Harlem, but in almost every street. I mean, it, it was, it, uh, particularly in the summertime, uh, a typical day at 4 o'clock, my phone would ring, and, and the mayor would be on the phone. He says, where are we walking to tonight? I thought I'd finally have a night off, and we were all looking forward to it, and, uh, but not John. Uh, John Lindsay would, would just say, where we, and, uh, and I'm serious. Uh, and, and at that point, we'd, we'd pick a, uh, a neighborhood to go into. It could be anywhere. And Harlem, of course, was one of our favorites. Uh, and um, he would go up there. We would not inform the police. We would not inform the press. He wanted to see it for himself. He wanted to talk to people himself. He wanted to get to hear the stories himself. Um, and so the relationships that were built, uh, sometimes long-lasting relationships, because we'd, we'd meet people and then, and then generate a, uh, a, a, a relationship, uh, were long-standing. So when, when the, the, the night of uh, 1968, when Martin Luther King was killed and the news first came across, uh, Barry Goddard, who uh, now deceased, and I, who were partners in, in doing the things in the streets for Lindsay, went up to uh, a bar called the Shalimar uh, on 126th and Lenox, where the five percenters, and that's a whole other history, who the five percenters were a movement that started in, uh, in the prison system, really. So there's a lot of ex-cons, and, and uh, their leader was a, a guy named Allah. Uh, and we had formed a relationship with him for quite a period of time. Uh, helped develop programs for him. Uh, he was crazy in a way, but he was also someone who was respected by a group of individuals that was difficult to get to. The police didn't want to get to him. There was no one else. They were outcasts. And uh, he brought them in. And we, we had a relationship. So we were up there as soon as we got the news about uh, Martin Luther King. Both of us met up there. And as you can imagine, it was uh, a, a very tense situation on the streets. Um, we spoke to the mayor, was at Gracie Mansion, and he said, I want to come up. And both of us said, you can't come up. There is there's no way we can guarantee safety here. Uh, you know, the, the, the windows, you know, there were potential of windows being broken. It was very hot. It still hadn't gotten to the world. People were more mourning and uh, it was the anger hadn't risen yet but it was the initial shock and you could see where it was going we had enough experience I said this could this it, it could be just too dangerous man it wouldn't have anything to do with it he says I'm coming up there I'm going to be there at such and such a time where do you want me to be and it's the man you, you, you know we're going to fight with him he was surrounded by the five percenters and a guy named uh, Bumpy Johnson who uh, was famous in American Gangster, who took a liking to the mayor and sent his daughter with a couple of guys. And if you look at the pictures, you'll see Chuck Willis. I just got the name. You'll see one of my guys, Chuck Willis. You'll see Teddy Gross. And then you'll see seven people you, no one could ever describe, uh, some wearing the shiki. That was the five percenters. Uh, and a couple of guys in suits that was the Bumpy Johnson. Uh, and um, that's who surrounded the man. They met us on the street, and he got out of the car, and he began to walk. And within minutes, you know, thousands of people knew he was there because everybody was on the street that night. And it was difficult to describe other than tumultuous. Uh, and, um, and he began walking and, and shaking hands and hugging people and saying, I'm sorry. And meanwhile, around him were some really bad guys of Harlem. Uh, and uh, at that point, Percy Shut Sutton showed up uh, and became a shoving match because he wanted to be next to the mayor and a couple of other local politicians. And this wasn't about local politics. This was about John Lindsay, who had been in that neighborhood many times, obviously very recognizable, who was coming back to say, uh, I feel your pain. And he did feel the pain. 